What's up everyone, Lakonde Mwila here, back with another video, and we're talking K-8s. Now, a couple of videos ago, I demonstrated how to make use of a policy enforcement strategy as part of your GitOps pipelines, specifically with Argo CD. And the tool I used in that video was Detree. Now, there've been a couple of interesting updates since then. You know how the Detroit Pistons came up with the Jordan rules as a defensive strategy to contain Michael Jordan? Well, someone at Detree was inspired by that, at least I think. We've got Argo rules, and similarly, it's a defensive strategy. Except in this case, the goal is not to limit or contain what Argo has to offer. Quite the opposite is to enhance your workflow. And Detree has incorporated rules that specifically protect you from Argo misconfigurations, whether you're using Argo CD, Argo workflows, or Argo rollouts. Now, the rules for some of the Argo projects aren't very comprehensive yet, and I'll talk about this a bit more later but it's definitely a good start, so I'm sure we'll see more exciting stuff in the near future. In this video, I'm going to show you how to incorporate Argo rules with the tree in Argo CD and Argo rollouts. For starters, I'll demonstrate protective measures for Argo CD when making use of an app of apps pattern. And this pattern simply means that you have a parent Argo application that you can create from the CLI or the UI. All the other applications destined for your target cluster can then live in a Git repo that this parent application will source. I'm going to have the Argo applications for my microservices as templates living inside of a Helm chart that the parent application will then deploy to Argo. And then Argo will in turn create the apps that have the configurations for the source and destinations of the respective microservices. And this is an efficient way of handling multiple applications in Argo, but it can also be a recipe for disaster. And maybe I'm the only one who's made the mistake of deploying an Argo application to the wrong namespace, but now I have a rule in place to protect me from something like that. So the Argo app of apps will have its own pipeline, which I'll walk you through just now. And when I create a new template for an application, I'll push this to the remote repository and create a PR, which will then run GitHub actions to test any raw manifest that I have in there, as well as the Helm charts using my Argo rules defined in the tree. And if the tests pass, I can merge that to the main branch and Argo CD will deploy any changes to the app of apps. All right, as you can see, I am logged into my Detree account and what you have in front of you is my Argo policy. And bear in mind, if you create an account with Detree, you'll also have this policy by default as well as the default policy, which you can see over there. The only difference in my case is that I've switched on all the Argo rules for my default policy as well. But I'm gonna focus on this one just so you can see um, all the Argo rules that exist at this particular point in time. Otherwise, looking at the other rules might just add a bit of noise and might make things a little confusing for you. Now, for this first section, I am focusing on Argo CD, and there are only two rules in place at this point. So there's ensure config map is recognized by Argo CD, so adding the relevant annotation for that. Um, that won't be applicable for my demonstration. The one that will be is ensuring that application and app projects are part of the Argo CD namespace. As I mentioned, I've fallen into this trap several times. I know it's a simple rule, but when you're working with patterns, especially like the app of app patterns, this is a big deal because it'll save you from a lot of issues that um, might um, occur. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch over to my source code. And what you're looking at over here is the directory for my applications. And I have two raw manifest files. I've got the project, um, which is open over here. And so this is for uh, an e-commerce project. So um, I'm using a mock e-commerce application, which I've done so in previous videos. Some of you who have seen those would be familiar with this. So I just have orders, products, and a GraphQL um, microservice. And so that, remember your project essentially encapsulates all of your Argo applications. So this is where the configurations for that are. And that is one raw manifest file, which will also be tested with the tree in the CI stage. And then we have the parent application. And remember, I'm following an app of apps um, approach. So this is the main application that is essentially going to help with um, deployment of all the other applications. So the source for this is gonna be in this particular repository called Argo e-commerce apps. And then the destination will be the local cluster where Argo CD is actually deployed, which is an Amazon EKS cluster. Um, the path, as you can see over here, is e-commerce project and then apps. And so in this folder over here, you'll see there's e-commerce project. And then we've got the directory there called apps. And so this is where my Helm chart is for all of my applications. And the different applications are defined in the templates. So I've already created orders and products. So if I open orders, you'll see over here, 
that this is um, an Argo CD application. The name is orders and the namespace is Argo CD, which is what it should be. And it belongs to the e-commerce project as you would expect. And then um, there are a couple of values here that are universal or common to the other templates, which is why I have I'm making use of values in this particular case over here and products will look very similar. Now, the only one that hasn't been created at this point is um, the GraphQL application in Argo CD. And um, you'll notice that the namespace is incorrect. And I've done that on purpose just so I can show you a quick example. And so bear in mind, you can also use the CLI tool for the tree just on your local machine as well. It's a really good practice. And of course, you can have this in your Git hooks as well. And so I'm just going to run the test locally. And as you can see, that um, policy check um, fails because of the wrong namespace uh, for GraphQL. And so this is a good sign. And so if I come here, obviously, I'm going to change that to the correct namespace, which is Argo CD. And now I'm just going to switch over to uh, the main.yaml file, because remember, I'm going to commit the I'm going to commit these changes and push them to the remote repository where all these applications live. And um, this is essentially the flow that's going to be followed um, before I merge into the main branch. And the main branch is what Argo CD is actually watching. So as you can see over here, this is going to happen on a pull request that gets made to the main branch. And in the case that um, any of these particular um, settings or configurations are met, that is what should actually trigger um, GitHub Actions. So in this case, I'm just going to be showing with an opened one. The only environment variable I have is my Detree token, which is taken from a secret that I've stored inside of GitHub Actions. And then inside the steps, um, as you would expect, I'm uh, checking out and then um, installing Helm. And then I proceed to install the tree as well as the Helm the tree plugin. Reason for this is because you'll recall that I have raw manifest files for the parent application and for the project. And in the case that your project is growing, you might want to add more of these. And so I'm just going to use the tree to test the raw manifest files. As you can see over there, the tree test, and it's, it's going to run the relevant tests. And I'm using the specifically using the Argo policy. So you just specify that flag over there because any raw manifest I create will only be for Argo in this case. And then in addition to that, because all of my applications are being managed through that Helm chart, I'm going to use the Helm to tree plugin for that. And the same command that I run um, in the terminal just a few uh, seconds ago um, is the same command that I'm running over here. And provided that this passes, um, then I'll be able, that's essentially just a rule for a workflow. And then I'll be able to uh, merge uh, my develop branch into the main branch and when that merge occurs, Argo CD will pick up on that particular change and will proceed to deploy that application. And then we'll have a new source and destination. And now for the GraphQL uh, microservice. So what I'm going to do now is commit those changes. So as you can see, all the relevant tests passed. So if I come over here, you'll notice all the raw manifests um, met all the requirements from our Argo policy. And then for the Helm to Tree plugin, I'm using my default policy. And if you think back to what I mentioned, um, I did specify that I've turned on all the Argo rules for my default policy as well. And so that has passed. So what I can do now is merge this. So as you can see, I'm in Argo CD and GraphQL application has been successfully created. If I click on this, you'll notice as well that all of the resources from the relevant source have now been deployed to my target cluster. Next up, I'm going to cover Argo rollouts, which I haven't spoken about in a previous video, so I'll just share a bit about it. It's basically a release tool like Flagger from Weaveworks, and it's a controller and a set of custom resource definitions that allow you to implement different deployment strategies like AB, Blue Green, or Canary. I'm going to demonstrate a Canary release strategy, 
And that means I'll have two versions of the application running at the same time. The old version, which is the primary release, and the new version, which is the canary release. I've already run the pipeline and it failed because of an Argo rollout rule that wasn't met. And I'll show you that in the code and when I'm doing the walkthrough. Thankfully, I can also test that locally before the pipeline runs again. So I'll make the relevant change and trigger the pipeline again. And if all the Argo rules um, specified in my tree account are met, then the pipeline will pass and the image tag will be updated in the rollout resource and Argo CD and Argo rollouts will go to work. All right, as you can see, I am currently looking at the repository for microservice orders and the build failed because one of the requirements for my Argo policy was not met, uh, specifically for Argo rollouts, as you can see over here, and the progress deadline abort property has not been set. Now, this is to essentially protect you in cases that you have pods that are being rolled out and that get stuck in an error state. So it's not enough to simply have a deadline for the number of seconds or a maximum in that particular case. You also need to set the progress deadline abort property to true. So if I head over to my source code over here, I'm currently looking at the rollout template. And if I scroll down, you'll see that I've now, I've now added progress deadline seconds to 700 and progress deadline abort to true. I've also set the scale down delay second. So each of these are best practices that are defined in your rules as well, which is what those rules are essentially there to help you um, enforce. Now, I did mention earlier that the lists for these Argo rules are not very comprehensive at this point, which is understandable. It's a new it's a new feature. However, I am looking forward to seeing more protective measures or rules put in place to help you not land into certain error errors, such as not having your deployment configurations added to the rollout. I think this is one of those little gotchas that could um, have you landing into different kinds of issues. Anyway, so now I'm going to switch over to my other repository. And this is actually for the microservice um, cold orders. And I'm currently looking at the main.yaml file, uh, which is the configurations for GitHub Actions. And I'm specifically going to focus on the section where I am updating the relevant Helm chart with the new image tag. So just so you're aware of what's taking place, I clone that repository, which is the one that we were looking at just now. And when I clone that repository, I'm going to update the image tag inside of the canary rollout. Um, you'll notice over here, orders canary rollout deployment in the image tag. So those are the these are the properties inside of the values.yaml file to reflect the new image tag that has just been built and the image that has been pushed to the Docker um, hub account. And after that, I then just, um, as you can see, run a Helm dependency updates to make sure I have all the relevant dependencies. And then this is where I'm running my Helm to tree test. And so this will make sure that all of the relevant rules are met, which is uh, previously what failed. And provided that this passes, then um, I will then proceed to actually commit these changes that I've just added to the values file and push them to um, the remote repository, which Argo CD is actually watching. And when it detects that, it will then proceed to deploy the application and we'll see Argo rollouts in action. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If so, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more.